Hey, what's going on? This um, is going to be a shaky cam video, so I apologize. I just want this to be a quick rant. Um, so I have a lot of portable handheld measuring devices, like uh, multimeters, for example, and I don't really have anywhere good to put them. And I'm, I'm always fighting to try to find free space to work on projects, uh, regardless how big my bench is, it's always full. Uh, and so I came up with an idea. My workbench has these open spots on the right and left side of my workbench, and I thought I could put some something magnetic up there, like, you know, put in four screws or bolts or something, and then get one of these magnetic hanging kits uh, where they'll basically stick to a mag uh, magnetic, I guess, ferrous surface would be more technical. Uh, and then you can just hang your multimeter from there. And these are usually used for job sites, you know. You go up there and you got some electrical equipment with uh, sheet metal casing and you just slap that onto there and then your uh, your multimeter hangs. So uh, the Fluke one hasn't come in the mail yet, so I don't know how it's designed, but the Agilent one is retarded. So uh, I'm, I got this one for the Agilent U1253B which, other than the horrendous battery life, is actually a really nice multimeter. But that's kind of a fatal flaw, so yeah, make sure you consider that before you buy one of these OLED models, because the battery life is terrible. So I went to install it, and uh, I never read the instructions. I always try it really quickly first, if it seems harmless, which it was, uh, and couldn't figure it out. So what I do? Read the fucking manual. So it does officially support the one I have. See, Keysight U 1250 series, which this is. You have to remove the kickstand, the tilting bale that comes with it, and reattach it so it faces upward, and then tie the strap to the actual kickstand, and then that's what you use. So essentially, for this specific model, the one I have, if you use the magnetic hanging kit, you now no longer have a kickstand. Yeah, it's on there, you could disconnect it and reconnect it, but it's a it's a plastic piece that'll wear out if you do this very often. So they have you push it up until it, it pops off. How many times do you think you're gonna be able to do that before the thing wears apart and breaks? You never know, but I definitely wouldn't uh, try it very often. And you're supposed to attach it like this, Wow, that is struggling to focus today. Uh, and then you're supposed to remount it like this. And then you disconnect this plastic piece and reattach this to the end of that. And then you no longer have a kickstand. So then you can only use this if you have something magnetic to hang it from in a convenient location. And basically renders it useless for your workbench because it's just gonna be laying down. That is freaking stupid and annoying, I don't know. Who designed that? But look, here's a stupid thing. For this model, if you have the U1240 series, you leave the kickstand on there. You take this plastic piece, and then you snap it onto the top, and you get to you get to use both. See, kickstand is still on there even after you have the hanging kit. That is what I wanted. And of course, their website and the packaging does not mention this, so you have to find out the hard way. This just pisses me off. So now I'm not really quite sure what I want to do. Maybe I'll 3D print something that I can snap onto here that I can hang this with so I can keep my kickstand. Because I use this often. It's good for videos. The bright OLED screen has awesome contrast and look how well that shows up in a video. But without a kickstand, that's going to be worthless. So yeah. So that was my first thing I want to rant about. I don't know what to do, if I should return it or come up with my own solution. Uh, second thing, um, so I have at least one or two of these tiny uh, Adafruit, so you can see the Adafruit logo right there, um, OLED character LCDs. Actually, I think it's, is it character? I think it's graphical actually, but it's monochrome. It's 128 by 32 pixels and it uses I squared C, or this one does. They have an SPI one, I believe, and then they have a sp a 64 height one, and I think that one will do either I2C or SPI. 
By the way, uh, it's awesome. It's I know it looks tiny. I mean, it's I mean, look compared to one segment of my finger. I mean, it's only like an inch across. But the contrast is so sharp. It's actually kind of like the screen on that guy. Uh, the contrast is so sharp. It's so much more readable than even the character LCDs that are ten times the size. And I love this thing. And being I squared C, you know, you only give up a, a pin or two. So what I found, instead of spending $17 every time I do a project using that, I found these on eBay. Now I looked, actually I ordered a, thir a 32 height one also, but this is a 64 character height one. And I looked and the entire thing looks identical to the one that Adafruit sells. Um, and so that means I should in theory be able to use our library. Now I'm probably going to have to try to figure out the actual I squared C address on this uh, before I use it or before I'll be able to use it. But um, I imagine once I get that figured out uh, this will work using the Adafruit library and that would be freaking awesome because these were you know I should have looked it up before I made this video but they were really cheap. I think they were like five bucks or something versus the I think this on Adafruit was $17, and then the 64 height one is probably like $25 to $30 or something like that. It's not unaffordable, they're just not cheap enough that you would just buy one and put it into every project. You know, it's, it's kind of, it starts to get costly. But I found these alternatives, and uh, there were some different ones, but I made sure to pull up the big giant pictures Adafruit puts on their site pull these up, make sure the pin out and the PCB is basically identical and they are. So I imagine this will work. So you're probably wondering why in a rant video am I talking about such an awesome deal? Well, this one is fine. Do you want to see if you can spot the difference? See all that corrosive crap on there? I'm guessing that's probably um, flux. So, I thought, not a problem, it's cheap and it's from China, I can't expect it to be perfect. I went and got out my Flux Wash, giant can, I've only used it a handful of times, and look. It drained itself while it was on my shelf. So, A, I've been breathing that, I don't know how quickly it evacuated itself, but it was really annoying that I bought a can, have barely used it, and it's empty. So, no cleaning this. I'm gonna have to go buy some more, but uh, flux, especially like rosin flux, can be corrosive. So you're supposed to wash it off of there. And then they sell no wash flux, but it doesn't seem to work quite as well. It's really annoying, but uh, I hope that it's not bad enough that it's actually done any harm. But looking at the two, I I, I would imagine it's fine if I just clean it off. The actual SMD parts are actually put on there really nicely, so. It'll probably be fine, but I just found it annoying that I pay for a full can of this stuff and I only got to use it a couple times because a stupid can leaked out. So there are my two quick rants for the day. Uh, thank you for being my punching bag and listening. <laughs> I'll see you for the next video.